Hey, I'm Sophie Kay, and this is Not Fest at Wacken 2022. It's Vacan 2022. I'm Sophie Case, sat here with Peter right here from the Halo Effect. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am very good. Very glad to be sat here with you because we're big fans of you here at, oh, likewise. at Notfest. And first of all, let's get into it because we're filming this at Vacan and the album is going to be out very, very soon, isn't it? Just one week. One week. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm very excited because we've been living with this album and the music for almost two years now. Really? Yeah, so we've had like four songs out now and to yeah. get the album out is going to be exciting. And we're out actually now promoting and playing the full album, which feels um, exciting and weird at the same time, you know, mm. playing songs that nobody, nobody's heard. So yeah. yeah, I'm really excited for it. And are there any themes that, cross, that go across the album? Themes? Themes, yeah. Any like lyrical themes or? Well, yeah, I mean, Michael who writes all the lyrics, I guess he used all of us as kind of a um, inspiration our, all of our life stories are pretty much the same we come from the same area and how we grew up and how we were like the outcast you know as mm. all our metal heads i guess you know and he used that as up until now where we are right now to to write like a theme of you know not just our story but like how it how we got affected by our surroundings by being who we were, are or were uh, and he can definitely give you a much more in-depth view of that but that's kind no. of how it described to, it's to great us. hearing you talk yeah, about yeah. it because your experience would you say that you always felt like an outsider yeah absolutely i mean and that's the beauty of this this whole band and the whole this whole genre i'd, I'd say like growing up in school and being like one or two or three kids in the, in uh, the class who like like extreme metal mm. and then getting older getting to know new people who had the same experience yeah and, you know and everybody kind of get together so i guess everybody in this festival has been some sort of an out outsider you know so that's yeah. what's nice because that's what this festival is all about exactly right? yeah and we all grew together or grow together now so. yeah and it's so big so many people here one thing that i did want to mention to you because i've had quite a few people talk to me about it different journalists a lot of my friends journalists and with everyone's been seeing melodic death metal like mm -hmm. having not a, not a resurgence as such, but a lot more younger bands playing melodic death metal again now. And what people keep constantly saying is that your releases just blow everything, old bands, new bands, everybody out wow. of the water because it, it sounds so authentic. Oh, well, thank you. And oh, I know you cool. have that, that history there as a band, but how did you how did you tap into that authentic sound because it's i feel like i'm taken back in time <laughs> to the 90s but in a modern way oh thank you very much uh, i guess we never really think about it right. and it's a boring answer but you would just go in and we write music or nicholas who's the like the the musical wizard in our in our mm. gang he kind of he writes a lot of music and he drags the ideas out of the rest of us and without thinking how it's going to sound in the end um playing the way that we do, mm. singing the way that Michael does, I guess it's going to be pretty natural to sound the way that it does. But it was never in like a conscious decision to sound a certain way. We just, we wrote music, we kind of knew how it was going to sound, we knew how we would, you know, make it sound. Mm. And that's that's all there is to it. It's like, it's it's always been like that. No, not too many, not too much thinking about how it's going to sound. And I think that's so important when you make music because it makes it all mm. so much more relaxed. I think something that definitely comes across in the music that I've heard so far is the authenticity that's oh. there and the experience that's there and all of that comes through and that's why it's already so well-rounded. But you, you very must much. feel the pressure at the same time with it being something new coming out. I guess I could do now <laughs> when you say it. <laughs> I put it on you. You <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? When we, when we started this band, we were... Um, it was just before the pandemic we started talking about it and then mm. the pandemic happened and everybody went off tour so we kind of got a chance to write music and record and go back and re-record and rewrite and um, so we had no pressure because nobody knew yeah. about the band besides us five you know and our close friends and family but um, once we kind of started you know reaching out talking to some labels and some some managements and stuff 
we were already done, so that there were no real pressure. I guess the next record will be a little bit more pressure, but yeah. I'm going to try and put that out of the equation anyways, yeah. Is there a moment on the album that you're particularly proud of, that you feel was like a real journey? Because some songs just happen, don't they, and they just come, whereas some of them are a bit more difficult. Sure there is. I mean, it's a, it's a really good question, and I, I think the answer will be different depending on who in the band you would ask. But mm. I have some songs that I feel more for because I might have been a bigger part of that song. But in general, I'd say that the whole the whole vibe of making this record with all five of us in the in the place at the same time, everybody's participating, everybody's writing, everybody's you know retwisting different ideas and. But there are some songs that I, I really, really like. I'd say a song like In Broken Trust mm. that we haven't released yet. Well, I think it's going to be released in a few days, so only just before the album. That's something that I really, I, I love that song. But I mean, in general, the, the whole process of making this album made has made me really proud of working with my best friends. You know, it's it's been a fantastic journey. That's beautiful. I think that shows yeah. in the songs because they just flow so naturally. Thank you. Um, and that you can feel that creativity there. Yeah. So what would you like as a band? Like, Do you have goals going forward or are you just making music and seeing what happens? No, I think that when we started this band, we wanted to like, go back and take all the good things out of our uh, past experiences, just have a good vibe, have some good times and just enjoy everything that we do. Our goals is to to keep on doing that, mm. go out and play uh, for as many people as possible, uh, not tore ourselves to death, so to speak, but you know, be out and do um, great opportunities. And, and I mean, just having fun. It mm. sounds maybe like a cliche, but that's why we do this, to have fun and enjoy ourselves. And that's the goal. That's I don't wonderful. need to be the biggest band in the world, obviously. I just want to have a good time. Yeah. We've been doing this for such a long time and I, I just want to have fun. That's great. Do you know what? Just to let you know as well, if you're watching this right now, if there's noise around us, it's because we're sat right by Slipknot's dressing yeah. room and they're about to walk out <laughs> and go on stage. <laughs> so we might get in the van with them and see what happens. Um, one question I did want to ask you is, which is the album that you would say got you into heavy music? Uh, that's, that's really easy. I mean, it started out like when I was 13. And this is, may, might not be as heavy, but back then it was. I went to my first Iron Maiden show. Uh, watching Iron Maiden, Halloween was supporting them. Uh, that's when I decided I wanted to be a musician. And wow. then kept on listening to that style of music, coming into more extreme music like Atheist and, and you know, Massacre and, and uh, Morbid Angel and stuff like that. So, But I, if I have to choose one record that got me into metal, it's going to be uh, Live After Death with Iron Maiden. Okay. Live album. That's my first vinyl with Iron Maiden that I ever bought. Like, do you still have it? Of course. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Uh, uh, fantastic. It's really old now. <laughs> yeah, because I sadly gave away all my old vinyl oh, no, T-shirts. I, I kept them all. Yeah. <laughs> very, very yeah, clever. Yeah, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> very clever. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, because it's a question we've been asking everybody, what is a hobby that you're into that some people might not realise you're into? Well, all everything that I've ever done has started out as a hobby and I kind of moved it into something mm. that worked well. So Daniel and I, we, we have a brewery because we like beer and like to brew beer and I, I like to cook. So I started a restaurant and I do that. So that's wow. been my hobby. But right now my hobby is just, you know, I guess working out. Right. Just, that's when I can be myself and I don't want to make a profession out of that, obviously, yeah. you know, but yeah. But I, I enjoy doing it, just, you know, being myself for, for an hour or two. I want to ask you about your brewery. Yeah. So where did the where did the concept of that come from? After touring, uh, especially in America, uh, a lot of times where you guys were so much ahead of, uh, like Sweden, for instance, uh, as craft craft mm. beer, we we got to try a lot of uh, really really cool breweries uh, beers, and especially Daniel wanted to try and brew his own stuff, and um, so he did that, and then actually started a brewery, and I just. Well, I like to, your beer is great. I like to help you promote it. Should we do it together? And we just wow. started. This is like seven years ago. Yeah, we started that. So Odd Island Brewing is is uh, the name of the brewery. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. And what about the restaurant? What kind of food do you do? We do uh, luxury burgers. You know, luxury like burgers. Uh, well, luxury is, sounds a little bit too posh, I guess. But you know, we try to do everything really great from scratch. But mainly nice. burgers, burgers and lots of beers, obviously. So. <sighs> 
burgers and beers. Yeah. Okay, you're making me realise that it's dinner time right <laughs> yeah. now. Thank you so much oh, for chatting you. to us thank here at so Notfest, and we'll be speaking to you again very soon, I'm sure. Appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. Peter. Thank you. <laughs>